mean, we have five otters currently. I can't imagine having two or five more. So yeah. we would we would have to um, place them in another facility with a high standard of care, just like we have here. Right. Um, but it's it's a lot to think about. So we're yeah. gonna have to start planning. Yep. Dr. Nate came and we attempted to conduct an ultrasound to see if we could actually pinpoint when we would think that Scarlett would deliver. And unfortunately, she wasn't very cooperative. You know, too many strange things going on. So we just went on as normal. We set up the nest box. We had this camera in there. We're watching her, watching her. She probably creeped her out a little bit because we were watching her. And we waited the 63 days and no pups. No, we didn't get our pups. But we learned a lot. We learned how to, how to set up for it. We got the uh, river otter birthing plan in place. We have a, a pup box in place in case she was not willing to care for the pups and we could care for them for her. But alas, no pups this time. Now we have had a live bee exhibit. It is partially outdoors by our pollinator gardens. And then we also have this really neat indoor exhibit, which shows like the inner workings of the hive. And we're able to see the bees right from inside our building in the space called the naturalist cabinet. Today, we're gonna go pick up the bees from the post office. Today we are going to be installing some bees into two of our beehives. So down here we have bees that we purchased from a breeder. They are actually shipped through the U.S. Postal Service, believe it or not. They ended up here. Um, you can look inside. We'll show you this container in a little bit. Um, and we're going to show you the two places that we're going to put them in. And then our visitors who come visit us or if you watch our digital bee programs, you'll get to see um, what happens in the hive over the season. We have two types of hives. We have an exhibit hive that is inside the building and then we have traditional hives outside. And inside the hive are these plastic frames. People usually use either plastic or wood frames and it's just a base for the bees to build out honeycomb. That's um, all of this right here is honeycomb that previous hives have built on this plastic frame. You can see these little hexagonal holes. This is all beeswax that the bees produce and then inside this honeycomb, what these little holes are, they're either gonna raise baby bees or they're gonna store food in the form of nectar and pollen.
do uh, get some honey from our bees, but it's mainly for educational purposes, so we're not really able to mass produce honey, but we are able to get a sweet treat here and there. So I, you know, I've had friends and family members over the years ask me, you know, what has kept me here this long? That, you know, potentially I could have gone on to do something else or maybe something bigger. Um, and in what I say is that everything I've always wanted is right here at the Wild Center. I get to hang out with really cool animals every single day. The little girl in me that wanted to be a veterinarian really badly, but um, didn't have the patience for vet school, gets to do medical procedures and help assist with veterinarians. I get to do wildlife rehabilitation. Um, I get to talk to cool people from all over the world every single day. And I get to participate in all kinds of amazing projects. I've been able to do exhibit design. I've been able to uh, hang lights in the woods. I've been able to do art projects. Um, and I've been around all of these amazing, inspiring people for all of these years that my brain is so engaged, I can't imagine being anywhere else. Not to mention the fact that I live in a six million acre park that is woods and streams and you know beautiful trails. Why would I ever go anywhere else? That's what I always say. <laughs>